we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. This episode is all about extreme sports and it's what the internet was made for. Some of the most amazing, insane and, well, extreme videos out there. You see, I get breathless climbing out of an armchair. Well then, stay where you are, George. Sport is exciting, adrenaline-packed and physical. In tonight's episode, we're pushing that one step further. We've got every surface covered, from scaling walls to walking on water. We'll also be pulling the trigger and hitting the target in our very own explosive finale. find leafy autumn walks too relaxing? If the answer is yes, you probably need to watch this clip and get some very good health insurance. All you really need to ski is some sort of slippery surface and a gradient. And a really, really big pair of ski boots. It's the squirrels I feel sorry for. As anyone with a dog can tell you, leaves are very slippery. The low friction between the leaves and the skis makes them even slipperier and helps these daring athletes fly through the forests. I suppose this is the kind of global warming future. This is going to be how our skiing holidays will be in sort of 40, 50 years' time. They're just preparing themselves for, for the eventuality. Globally, snow cover has decreased recently, so this may become a real problem for skiers soon. One way ski resorts are trying to counteract the lack of snow is by using a snow cannon. Snow cannons make real snow but the process is a little different to how it occurs in nature. Here's how it's done. First, high-pressure air is pumped into the machine. This combines with cold water entering through a second pump. The water and compressed air combine together to make water droplets. These then turn into ice crystals, or snow, inside the gun, which is fired out into the air before hitting the ground. The ideal temperature for making snow is minus two degrees Celsius. So for ski devotees, if it's too hot for a cannon, hit the slopes in your local forest. Just check it's not a big dog walking area. No one wants that on their salopets. No snow, no problem. This is our first hack hit. If you thought skiing wasn't dangerous enough as it is, how about throwing an active volcano into the mix? This next clip definitely earns the title Extreme. Climbing up the tallest volcano in Europe, then skiing down it. What happened to just going for a jog in the park for exercise? And this surface can be very rapid. You might even call it quicksand. Sorry. So sand, the maximum speed that's been recorded is 92 kilometers an hour. The black sand which they're skiing on is actually basalt, which is the rock that lava is made out of. When the hot lava reaches the ocean, it can actually cause the material to shatter due to the large temperature differences. This is what can cause the small particles of sand and the black sand that you see in areas near volcanoes like this one. Please don't ski on actual lava. It will not end well. Ever look at a horse and think, I'd love to attach myself to the back of that and snowboard? Well, this clip is going to be right in your stable. A galloping horse can get up to about 40 to 48 kilometers per hour on a good day. Now, if you're running in snow, things are very different. You're more likely to be looking at 30 to 35 kilometers per hour. That's still very fast if you're being towed behind on some skis. 
Surprisingly, though, horsepower wasn't always used for dragging snowboarders. The idea of horsepower was come up with by an engineer called James Watt. And it's because he developed these new steam engines that he was hoping could do work in mines. But in order to sell them to the people who owned the mines, who basically used horses for all these kinds of jobs, he wanted to compare his steam engines to the horses that already existed. And thus was born the concept of horsepower. If Superman was a snowboarder, level terrain would be his kryptonite. But get yourself an extreme horse and you'll be flying. Any ski lift with legs gets my vote. It's a hit. Coming up at Hack HQ, Mike takes his human guinea pig Stephen Grant onto an explosive rifle range. We've already shown you leaf skiing, volcano skiing, and horseboarding. Now, have a look at this lot, who took the term rolling waves a bit too literally. This hack is a combination of balance and multitasking, both of which require quite a lot of thought. Why exactly is it hard to balance with eight tiny wheels attached to your feet? Staying upright on a surfboard is tricky enough. What helps is wax. This increases the friction between your feet and the board, and most importantly, makes you look cooler. But add wheels into the equation, and surfing just got a whole lot harder. Why? Because the wheels grip the board, which means you roll off the board instead of sliding. A small but very distinct difference. Believe it or not, this makes balancing much trickier. One false move and your weight will shift from the centre of the board and send you crashing into the waves. Contrary to some beliefs, nobody is actually able to truly multitask. Even if you don't realise it, your brain is quickly switching between concentrating on the different tasks. However, some people are better at this switching than others. Roller surfing tests your balance and multitasking. But then again, so does eating on a roller coaster. It's a hack miss, I'm afraid. From one ridiculous aquatic activity to another, this guy can make you a real-life James Bond. Jetpacks for your feet! Flyboards fundamentally work on the same principle as rockets, which is Newton's third law. And that's that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So as you fire a huge mass of water down out through the flyboard, then you get an equal and opposite reaction and get pushed upwards into the air. These jets can propel you from underwater to 12 metres up in the air. You need a huge amount of water per second coming out of the bottom to do this, which is why you need a 200 horsepower jet ski sat there in the water. Jets, water, flying. Yes, I think this is definitely a hit. If the last guy was Aquaman, this guy is definitely Spider-Man. So what he's done is he's got these magnets, he's going to use them to stick to the side of the wall, and the friction between the magnet and the wall will stop him from sliding off. If you want a magnet that you could turn on and off, the best thing to use is an electromagnet. And the way you manage that is that you get some wire and coil it around in lots and lots and lots of loops. And then if you want to amplify the magnetic field, you pass some kind of piece of metal through the centre, a metal core. And then when you put a current through that wire, you generate a magnetic field, you create a magnet. Now here's a way for you to defy gravity. Just make sure the magnets are strong enough, else you'll be more Splatterman than Spider-Man. This clip is for people who want to ditch the lift and burn a few calories. You see, I get breathless climbing out of an armchair. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could manage it. This guy is using absolutely no specialist equipment to climb this skyscraper. Spider-Man eat your heart out. He's gone one better than even Spidey, as all he's using to climb is chalk. The tallest skyscraper in the world that was ever climbed was the Burj Khalifa, 828 metres. Now, that was in 2011 by a Frenchman known as the French Spider-Man, and he got all the way to the top, which is incredible. Shork does an amazing job, but there really is no substitute for skill and experience in climbing. Ever been looking for a bottle opener, but all you could find was an off-road BMX bicycle? Well, this is the hack for you. I'm going to attach a BMX to my keyring, so next time I'm at a party or in an environment where someone needs to have a bottle open, I'm there, I'm ready. 
Spinning the wheel generates a lot of momentum in the spokes of the wheel. And when those spokes come into contact with the uh, cap of the bottle, that momentum is passed into the cap of the bottle. And if you're holding onto it tight enough, that will just pop the top of the bottle off. This is a massive hack hit. And just one more reason to take your BMX to every party. Over at Hack HQ, Mike and his human guinea pig Stephen are creating their very own extreme sport. Mike! Stephen! Um, what are you doing? Just practicing my darts. But today's our extreme sports hack. That's why I thought mountain biking. Brought my mountain bike. We can go out on the mountain bikes. Today is our extreme sports hack, but mountain bike just isn't extreme enough. We need something a bit more powerful. What, like darts? Yeah, well, darts are going to show us how objects move through the air, and we're going to need to know that for our epic hack later on. We're going to be doing target practice with a twist. Yeah, I'm up for that. Great, well, I'm going to show you that later on, but first, we need to know how things fly, and for that, we need darts. Oh, OK, so how do darts fly? So a dart is a really aerodynamic shape. When it leaves your hand, there's very little air resistance, and it flies in a parabola, which means it goes in a slight curved shape to the dartboard. That'll be because of gravity pulling it down? Exactly right. So we apply force to the dart, and that travels towards the dartboard, and gravity is pulling it down slightly. But because it's only a short distance, it doesn't really affect it that much. So does that affect how we aim? It is, but we don't think of that, and it automatically happens. So we're quite used to gravity. So throwing a dart, we compensate for it. Want to have a go? Yeah, definitely. Go for it. OK. So aiming where I think it wants to go. Oh, dear. Didn't want to go there. Or there. Mm, that's a little bit harder than it looks. Isn't it, it is, but let me make it harder for you. Oh, really? By taking the flights off. Now give it a go. Oh, no. What's going to happen here? Wow. Oof. Well, that was even harder. Why don't they go straight? Well, they don't go straight because they didn't have the flight on it. Now, the flight adds a tiny little bit of drag to the actual dart. So if it starts to wobble, if it goes up like this, then there's more drag on this side of the dart. So this pushes it into the right direction. Same as if it's on the bottom, the drag's on the bottom, and that's what causes it to stabilise. So aerodynamic at the front to go fast, yep. drag at the back to keep it stable. Exactly right. And air is a really powerful force when it comes to flight. Air. Hey. Uh, well, thanks, but I don't really need my hair dried right now. So this airline will show you just how powerful these air currents can be. If you grab hold of that, yep. and a ping pong ball, now yep. try and balance it okay. on the top of that airline. Pretty good. Pretty easy, I would have thought. Try again, tilt it sideways. What? OK. Oh, my God. Wow. It's not falling. Look at that. That was amazing. That's really impressive. How did it do that? I'm pleased you asked. Bernoulli's principle. It's the same science that causes planes to fly. So how does that work, then? You've got this fast-moving jet of air. This causes low pressure around the ball. Mm. Now, when this ball gets gravity acting on it, it moves down into a high pressure area, and the high pressure pushes it back up into the low pressure area, causing it to stay in the air. Right, so you show me how things can fly through the air and how powerful the air can be in changing the direction of objects. I can't wait to try this out on our epic hack. But there's one vital component that we're missing. And what's that? Dynamite, of course. Ah, oh, Mike, do we have to use dynamite for everything? Of course we do, because this is going to improve our target practice with explosive results. Are you ready for it? Let's do it. Our epic stunt today uses dynamite to improve your target practice with explosive results. Roller surfing, wall climbing, and actual jetpacks. What could possibly top that? How about a skateboarding baby? Foot archery, belly darts. You really don't want to miss this. Don't go anywhere, because that's all coming next. Want to speed up your pram technique, but hate running? Here's the perfect parenting and fitness solution. I've noticed the habit that uh, a lot of people have got of jogging whilst pushing a pram, which seems to be, you know, quite a thing. It always looks like you've stolen the baby, though, I find. Want to see a skateboarding baby? If the answer to that is no, you need to take a long, hard look at yourself. For the rest of you, I give you... It's only at 9 to 15 months where kids can actually start to get up and walk for the first time, which makes this child particularly impressive. 
By the age of two, most babies can just about stand on their tiptoes. This guy is standing on a skateboard. Balance is really important if you're a human because you spend a lot of time on your two feet. Um, and we have three systems that are specialised to do it. Our sight, our muscles and our vestibular system, that is the little canal of fluid in our inner ear, all combine together to tell us which way is up and which way is down. You'll rarely hear the argument for babies taking part in extreme sports. But, believe it or not, they're actually better suited to it than adults. Why, I hear you cry? Well, to stay balanced, you have to keep your centre of gravity over the board. This is much easier if you're a baby, as your centre of gravity is lower, which makes toddlers the perfect age to learn skateboarding. With a kid like this, you'll never run out of bragging rights on a play date. It's a hit. Name the least extreme sport you can think of. I bet loads of you said darts. Well, this next guy proves you don't have to be an overweight lager drinker to conquer the sport. The way that you can fire darts with this slightly curious contraption is that you can place the cup over your stomach, suck your stomach in, and that sucks air through the tube into the cup. And then, if you've got strong enough stomach muscles, you can push that air out very suddenly. That's a pressure wave which travels along the tube with enough force to send that dart flying out the end. The reason this pin can pierce the glass is primarily down to pressure. The way pressure works is that it's a force distributed over an area. If something's moving very quickly with lots of force, and has a very tiny area like the head of a pin, it can have a huge amount of pressure, and this can do a lot of damage. I just had a gut feeling about this one. It's a hit. If you thought talking on the phone and typing was multitasking, Wait till you see this next trick. This hack is crazy. Uh, it's kind of scary as well. My God, like what she can do. I've never seen anything like that. In many ways, your hands and feet are actually very similar. Both have very similar bone structures. With 27 bones in each hand and 26 in each foot, over half the bones in your body are found in them. As with anything, practice makes perfect. If you practice doing fine, dexterous tasks with your feet, the chances are you'll get better and better at it. Even Robin Hood ain't this good. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig, Stephen, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. It's time to step out onto the range as we try out some very explosive target practice. Ah, a target. A target indeed. What are we doing, Mike? Well, this is our extreme sports hack. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than shooting a target but not knowing where you've hit the bullseye or where you've hit it. How are we going to do this? Dynamite. Of course. Yeah. Silly me. How? Well, if we put dynamite on the back of the target, right in the centre, if I hit the bullseye, it's going to set off the dynamite, destroy the target with a big explosion. I know I've hit it. They're using a high-powered rifle and long-range bullets, so there'll be no excuses for missing. OK. How far away, anyway? 100 metres over there in that direction. Dynamite, bullets, rifle. Is it your birthday? <laughs> you would think so, wouldn't you? So what we're going to do is we'll take the stick of dynamite, strap it to the back. OK. You tear me off some tape. Yep. There you go. Thank you. Great. OK, good. Over there. Right. There you'll be with your rifle. I'm next to the target. Target set. Time to bring on the guinea pig. Sorry, I meant Stephen. That looks really quite... Yeah, heavy duty. They are, they are. So it goes into this gun, and these are 0.243 bullets. This is the hammer. This gets locked and loaded, and that fires the primer that then ignites the powder and shoots the bullet straight over there at over 1,000 metres per second. 1,000 metres per second is incredible. These really are the Usain Bolt of bullets. So it's going to be able to reach all the way over there to the target? Oh, quite easily, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. OK. And then detonate the dynamite. Do you want to show me how it works? Before they do anything, Mike and Stephen need to lock and load very carefully. That's all loaded up. Right. Then we put that underneath. 
We've got the hammer action, the bolt action. This goes into the into the gun, yeah. into here. That locks down. Put the bullets in, and then we fire. Are you going to go first or am I? Um, you choose. Right, ready for the ultimate extreme sports hack. Let's do it. Ready, aim, fire. Trust me, this looks a lot easier than it is. If only I knew if I'd hit the bullseye. This is the thing, isn't it? Yeah. At least we know we don't have to go up there and have a look. This is true. This hack is working already by virtue of the fact that you're bad. Keep that chat up, Stephen. You'll go in a minute, mate. See, you've saved us the journey. <laughs> I know. It's incredible. Um, so how does it actually blow up when the... What, what happens? So this is going at over 1,000 metres per second. Right. That hits the dynamite, it breaks up the bonds and detonates it. Yeah, brilliant stuff. The dynamite detonates when enough energy triggers a reaction. Enter Mr Bullet. Can I have a go? Yeah, of course. Fabulous. There you go. All right, Stephen, let's see how fabulous you are. Where did that go? I think finding that bullet would take a whole extra episode. Let's just leave it, eh, Stephen? Load it up again. Then down. OK. Perfect. Try and get it. OK. I don't even know where that went. See, so much easier. We don't need to walk down there to see whether you got the bullseye. You've got it. You know, epic extreme sports hack. It's true. All that spare time I'd be spending right now looking to see if there's a little hole in the middle of the target. No need for it. I've blown it up. Perfect. Well done. A truly epic extreme sport that saves you time when you're on the range. We've skated, surfed, climbed, boarded, and jetpacked our way through the world of extreme sports. Now, go and have a nice cup of tea. We'll see you next time on How Hacks Work. <laughs>